get up good as well as clean joint in an owing in the king between the sets. Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast with your budgie boys Tim and Owie hydrated by a hairy man brewery and this is Between the Sets and I didn't recognise old mate sitting next to me. What have you done? Hey, are we recording this on the tube? <laughs> yep, it's on the tube. Oh, there's a big reveal going on over here. <laughs> Should we mention it for our listeners who are streaming the audio right now? Yeah, sure. You've, you've shaved your noggin. I've done the old egg boy. <laughs> Is that a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Egg yeah, it's Boy. Egg Boy. Uh, Super Biscuit actually messaged me and I said, listen, mate, I'm just copying you. Mm. And he goes, well, funny you say that because I was copying Captain Kookman. I was actually going to say this. Sometimes there are some photos of uh, Captain Kookman and his miso that pop up in his story. If those, uh, those who don't know, Dan Carr, who's been on the podcast before, great body surfer. And him and his miso look very similar to you and your miso. Yeah, it's like a bizarro world <laughs> where, or even like, oh, we saw this film, the film Tenant. Oh, uh, yeah, I've not seen it, so no spoilers. No but spoilers. Any good? I really didn't like it no, at all. That's a, I've heard that, yeah. Um, but there, it's all the time travel business going on. Because it's Christopher Nolan, yeah, who uh, famously directed Inception. Yes, which is also not that great, but people love the rave no. about it. And one of our one of our favorite farming films, <laughs> Interstellar. <laughs> he also did uh, the Batman, the Dark Knight stuff. Yeah, and you you weren't a huge fan of those, but I I like them. I do like Christopher Nolan. The Prestige is one of my favorite films, Tim. Oh, he's directed some great films. I just think it was so funny. A lot of people coming out of the cinema after seeing Inception, and they're like, "Oh, so good! Oh, so good!" But it was like, mm. "Yeah, but." A lot of it didn't make sense, and uh, like a, lo- a lot of people tried to make meaning out of it, especially the end with mm. the little twist. But you know, when they're in the snow, yeah, when you're like, this is just someone's dream. <laughs> Who's having dreams in the snow? Yeah, I have not had an int- my my dreams just involve me walking places, and it's normally <laughs> carrying bar. <laughs> like I've never had an interesting dream ever. Mm. Anyway, anywho, uh, they're doing the time travel business, and I reckon it's just April and. Myself, mm. or a younger version of the cars. Possibly. Possibly. It Possibly. could work like that. Mm. But, uh, yeah, so I've done the old shavo. And is it because I always mention when people shave their head, Corey recently shaved his head for, travel, uh, for, for charity, I think it's great because when you're body surfing, there's nothing better than the feeling of having a short haircut. And for some reason, a lot of surfers go with the long hair, which is just not practical. Mm. If you're in the water, especially salt water, all that time, you don't want to be washing your hair and cleaning your hair and getting it caught in your face. Yeah, you want a, a nice buzz cut, and that's what you've done. Well, you were the you were the pioneer of this, Tim, because uh, everyone had the long long locks going back in the day, and you went, "Nah, you know what? I'm shaving it off." Yeah, and I just went, "I'm sorry, <laughs> Tim. I'm going to need a little bit more information." <laughs> and I finally worked it out. I got the clippers out this morning, and I went, "You know, it's just going." When you say you finally worked out, this this has been around for a while. Yeah, people have been shaving their heads for a long time. Uh, but this is probably, I think this is the first time I've done it. You've had it short before. Mm. You used to have very long hair, like yeah. Corey long hair. Yeah. Uh, but, but you've had it short for a while and ha- you haven't been for a surf. You only did this this morning. Yeah, it was this morning. So you haven't been in the water yet, but I tell you what, it's the best feeling in the world having mm. a shaved head and jumping in the water. So uh, that will be exciting for you. Yes. Now you've 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 been a bit MIA lately, have I? Well, we we went for a body surf the other day. Uh, we had a good little turnout. Bondi came along. Sean came along. I jumped in the water. Now we're having very short body surfs these days. It's still very cold, very mm. icy in the water. So we jumped in for about half an hour. After a few waves. We said, oh, it's time for a bacon and egg roll. And the Bondi breakfast uh, uh, details just keep getting better and better. <laughs> no carrot this time? So he was in line. It was a long line at the, the kiosk. Everyone was down at Cronulla. It was a lovely day, very warm. So everyone's going for a walk. They've got the dogs on the leashes and everything. And they thought, oh, you know, might, might grab a coffee and some breakfast. So the line was massive. So Bondi had a lot of time to work out what he was going to have for breakfast. Mm-hmm. And he's looking and he's looking. He goes, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a sausage and bacon roll. Now, I think he's had it before and he quite enjoyed it. So he's getting ready. He's licking his lips. He's keen for this sausage. And 
he got up to the counter and he goes, I'll have a sausage and bacon and an egg roll. Oh, no, no egg, obviously. Sausage and bacon roll. And they're like, oh, sorry, mate, we're all out of sausage. <laughs> and he honestly had to take another half hour, go back to the, the blueprints and work out what he was going to have a breakfast. He ended up just having like four hash browns. Oh, yeah. Everyone loves a hashy. But, but I, I'm, I'm getting over this no egg thing because just have a bacon roll. Yeah. A bacon roll would be nice. He likes sauce, so it's fine. Tomato sauce, bacon, bread. And they load up the bacon there, so you'll get a big fat wad of bacon mm. on your on your roll. I reckon that's the way to go. But yeah, the waves were not huge, but we, we were able to have a bit of a swim. You were not there, Oe, and I was very disappointed because oh, yeah? you were you were in the country, you were in the state, you were in the city, you were in the town. <laughs> yeah, I was in town. Uh, what do we do Friday night? Do we do we go out anywhere or no, I, that's when I saw that terrible movie. That's right. Um, yeah, listen, I just had a little sleep in. Uh, I'm on holidays. I took a couple of days off this oh, week. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to really relax. I didn't want to have another day where I'm getting up, I'm doing something. If the waves were okay, mm, mm. I probably would have made the effort. But saying that, I did. I had a great surf on Friday with Robbie. So that's kind of why I didn't come down on Saturday. Oh, you went? Oh, because you took a bit of time off your free Friday. Robbie's also just had a kid. I worked out the name. Do you know the name? Yeah, Spend yeah. Dog. Spencer, who apparently it's named after a famous bodyboarder as well. Right. So okay. uh, he ha- he's got a bit of a, what do you call it? Maternity leave. Yeah. <laughs> so pa- he's, he's pa- Paternity leave. Paternity leave. Mm-hmm. So he's off with the kid and, and you're off uh, with some holidays. So you mm-hmm. went to a secret spot. I saw some footage. Looked yeah. nice. Yeah, it was really nice on Friday. And uh, yeah... I took the guy butcher out. The oh pipo. yes! Now you took this out when we had a little paddle the other day, and, and there weren't many ways, but it looked like you had a lot of fun just paddling mm. out. How did it go at the secret spot? Uh, I didn't surf very well. I caught two waves early on, which Robbie pulled <laughs> in front of me on both times. Now, and you've got the footage of this, so you'll be able to post I this. Did, it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, the the wave type probably wasn't suited for the pipo because. Okay. Um, it's a, it's a reef break, but it's very, very shallow Mm. and very short, sharp drop. So, uh, with the Pipo, you kind of have to get it over the top of the lip. And then when you're going down the face, if you hit the bottom, you've got to try and bottom turn it out, but it's just, I found it just a little bit too thin. And so what was happening was I was trying to kind of do the bottom turn and I wasn't just, I wasn't getting enough um, push back because there wasn't enough volume in what I was riding. Uh, so I probably should have just gone the bod. I got a couple of good waves. I was happy with it, but it was a bit more of a, um, a boog type of day. Would you have preferred to... Uh, I know there's a few bodyboarders out there. Would you have preferred to jump on the boog or just ha- handboard it? No, nah, I'm not good with the... I'm not good with the boog, mate. I've, j- I've gone on it a couple, a couple of times, but I'm just... I'm just a body surfer at heart. You so, know? so like when I see a lot of pipos, they're getting to the size of bodyboards, and mm. the guy butcher one is sort of in the shape of a bodyboard. Yeah. So, what's the difference between? I guess obviously it's made out of wood, mm. uh, not foam, so it doesn't float as much. So, it, what's like? Is a pipo closer to a bodyboard or closer to a hand plane? <laughs> I suppose it's how you ride it, really. Uh, I guess with the with the pipo, your main difference is your flex. So, with a bodyboard, you can you've kind of got a little bit more control, and when you hit the hit the bottom turn, you can r- kind of rip it into position. Where with a with a pipo, it's kind of like you just you're almost dropping a rock mm. because it's it's more made for that kind of planing surface where if you just you just pick your line and go. Uh, I'm still learning. Uh, I really want to talk to barrel pig about it uh because he can he can write anything yeah. obviously um but yeah i'd like to get a little bit more intel on how we should be writing these things because i'm new to it uh and i'm sure there's plenty of people out there that have got a guy butcher or um they might have a benway or any of the other pipos on the market that they're still learning they're getting their head around um so it might be good to even get someone uh, a pipo who, yeah, expert, a, a pipo yeah. expert in to uh, tell us how to write the different types of waves. Mm. Mm. But uh, speaking of Guy Butcher, we've got some very ex- exciting news. Oh, you, you want to tell the listeners what's going on? 
Yeah, Guy has uh, messaged me this morning. Now, we, we spoke about this on the podcast probably two months ago uh, about giving away another board. So, we gave away a board last season, uh, the the Benway, yeah. uh, the one that was designed by the listeners and that ended up going to Layla. It's an awesome piece of machinery. Uh, very, very unique. Uh but Guy has now made something specifically for us to give away awesome. on the podcast. So we've got another giveaway coming up, which I'm really excited about. But the problem is we don't have any ideas on how to give it away. Now, we, we made mention of possibly getting people to call up a radio station saying they, their name was Guy um, <laughs> And getting audio, like talking about the Body Surf podcast, then we would have to go and get the audio, <laughs> play it back on this. It would be hilarious. It would be great. Mm. And if you want to do that, I'm, yeah. I'm sure you can still probably do it. We've thought up an easier way to do it because <laughs> uh, that's just going to be a logistic nightmare. Absolutely. Uh, and it's not as easy to get on the radio as you think these days. <laughs> You've got to put your number on private. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be telling them your real name, obviously. Uh but we've decided to go down a different route. Mm. Timmy, tell us about it. So we would like you guys to send us through a video telling us why you would like the Guy Butcher handboard. It is a handboard, this one. Well, I haven't seen the, the... I've seen pictures. I haven't seen the proper dimensions of it. Uh, but it looks like it's got a... From what I can see, like a changeable hand strap or kind of grabbing mount yeah uh which is really interesting so i'm not sure exactly how that's going to work mm. i don't know if that's just two different design types and maybe guy's going to send out just one of those um so we haven't got it in our hands yet but uh, i'll speak to him more about it but it kind of looks like it's somewhere in between your pipo yeah size and your smaller uh, hand plane size it's a really good board it looks like it's very quick yeah um uh, but at the end of the day Mate, it's a competition. It's yeah. a free piece of machinery. And you've got to be in it to win it. So mm. send us through a video, 25 words or less, why you want the guy butcher. Send it through to at Budgie Boys and we'll be checking all the videos. Be as creative as you want. Try and make the audio good as well because that way we can play mm. it back on the podcast and everyone can listen. Maybe and, you uh, want to call a, a radio station and then you can use your 25 then, words <laughs> and then send the audio through to us. Ring up as Guy the Butcher mm. and uh, tell him that you love the Body Surf podcast. Imagine that. I'd love... And like, There's some there's some great radio shows on all across uh, Australia but also the world. So if you get on Howard Stern, give him a baba booey <laughs> and uh, that, that would definitely win in my book. How are we going to vote on this? I think it should probably go back to the Instagram. Yeah, uh, maybe the we'll get the people to vote because we don't want to be giving it to Bondi. <laughs> you know, you can't give it to your mates. No, no. But no. the thing is, everyone's our mate. That's true. In the community, the body surfing community, everyone's your friend. Well, it was good. Layla won last time. It was a secret sound competition last time. She was the only one who guessed correctly. Mm. The best thing is, we didn't have to splurge on postage. Yeah. We, we just go, here you go, mate, and that was sorted. But uh, if if someone wins in America, if someone wins in England, if someone wins in a different state, we've got to fork out a bit of money to get, and it's a big board, so we've got to post it to you. But uh, we'll get it to you somehow. So yeah, mm. let's let's get these videos coming through. We'll post it all on the Instagram, and uh, it will be a lot of fun. Twenty five words or less. You can go less than twenty five words. Do you know? Actually, I was listening to a podcast about like words and grammar and that sort yeah. of things. It's twenty five less or fewer. Oh. It's not actually less. Really? But we say less because it's such a gimmick. Mm. Anywho, that's enough from uh, the uh, guys from the Macquarie Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the people come for to listen to. <laughs> that's right. That's what I'm coming for. The dictionary references. By the way, Tim. Yes. Uh, words. <laughs> we use a lot of them here. Sometimes. Yeah. I don't know a lot of <laughs> no, a lot of words. I have a very small vocabulary. I only wor learnt the word vocabulary the other day. Mm. That's a new one for me. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, I, I, there's some a couple of words that I've been trying to work out in my mind lately. Mm. Um, the word there has many different mm. different types different of spelling. spellings. Yeah, yes. and we often get it wrong. Yeah, and I just don't know why. Like, why do we have to have so many different spellings? In in English, 
Why is there so many different spellings of the same word? Well, we can break this down, I think, and I'm no expert, but I think there's three there's. One yeah. is they are. Mm. So it's um, two words pushed together. Yeah. They are there. Mm. They are over there. <laughs> um, the other one is there. So possessive, that is my thing. It's theirs. Mm. Um, that's spelt obviously a bit different. And then there's just the, the regular there. Over, mm. over there. Over there. But people get it wrong all the time. For instance, right, I've, this is a slightly different word, but thanks, right? My boss says tanks. Is that just a typo? Official emails, like T-A-N-K-S, yeah. tanks. Well, do you know what? Um, Tom Hanks never says, he never signs his name, he just says... Tanks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> T. Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, use that one on Monday. <laughs> Uh, oh wait, it is Monday. <laughs> <laughs> we should mention movie magic. We are pre-recording this, and thank you for being so flexible. Are we? Uh, I, I've wanted to take a bit more time off during the week to to get involved in some other things, some other projects, and and you're very flexible to come and pre-record this show. Oh, also, I know, we'll mention that later. <laughs> I want to mention what's happening next week because that's a very exciting show. But before we get to that, I want to mention that we are still in a very weird place. All of us, we're struggling with the new world, which are is Are you COVID. coming out, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, wanted, I just wanted to get back, because we haven't mentioned this for a while, that, that COVID, coronavirus, COVID-19 is still around. It's still an issue. Mm. And it's affecting the body surfing community a bit. Cronulla Beach was actually uh, closed last week. Oh, really? So there was too many people at the beach wandering around and they actually had to close it. The car park was full. They were they were putting signs up everywhere, directing people to keep moving on. So we're coming into summer and uh, we're going to have a bit of a break, Christmas holidays, the new year, all of that stuff. And that's when we love going to the beach. We love going on little trips. We love going up and down the coast. What's it going to look like this year and next year if uh, we're still sort of lingering with all these issues that are happening. Yeah, I I don't think we will be, Tim. To be honest, as we're going pretty good now. Mm. I think Australia might have... We might have got out of it. We might have got out of it all right. You know, there's there's still cases down in Vic. And, yeah. Uh, we get the odd one cropping up in Western Sydney. But, yeah, I... By next year, I think we're going to be okay. So everyone's still going to obviously have to quarantine coming in and out of the country. We'll maybe establish a little bubble with, say, Fiji and mm, New uh, Zealand. New Zealand. I think life's going to be great down here. I'm worried about our uh, overseas listeners because yeah. it's a shit fight. Yep, 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 yep. It's, it's not good over there. Especially uh, America. Oh, uh, that's right. What are they going to do with the, the election? It's... I want to hear more from our American listeners because Absolutely. from an outsider perspective, it's all over for you. <laughs> it's scary. Well, we have a friend who... Uh, Get a sailboat, <laughs> hop on that thing, and I'll pick you up from Cronulla Beach. We have a friend who lives in New York who mm. snuck into Australia a few days ago. Yeah, He was in quarantine for two weeks. Mm. Stayed in a hotel, did everything, probably got tested, and now he's allowed to, to run around Australia. Mm. That's crazy. I didn't know there were any flights going from New York to Sydney. Mm. So I don't I, like it must have been super expensive to get that flight. Um, but he's he's out and about here in Australia. He's gonna be working from, from Sydney for a while. And I didn't know that was possible. I was like, you are where you are. Like, there are Australians stuck mm. overseas that were traveling at the time of the outbreak and they're stuck there. Mm. So it's weird that some people can get through and some people can't. I guess it's got to do with visas and citizenship and all that sort of stuff. But I just had no idea you could actually travel. Like, we well, couldn't even go to the Gold Coast a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's right. I said this a couple of weeks ago. My One of my friends is uh, in the process of adoption. Mm. And... He him and his wife have just gone to South Korea uh, a week ago. They're currently halfway through their 14 days quarantine. Yeah. They got there and uh, the the officials in South Korea said, no, 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 you guys can't stay in the same room. <laughs> and they were prepared for that. So they had a doctor's certificate and they said the right things. Okay. And now they're staying in the same room, which is okay. But apparently it's just luck of the draw. Like you... 
drop off at the airport, you're blindfolded, <laughs> you're shown to, like, it's a scary world we're living yeah. in, Tim. You know, you hop on a plane. Yeah, you don't know what's waiting for you on the other side. Yeah, but it's like, Australia's all right. Yeah, no, we're doing well. And and I've been chatting to a few people of uh, what the future of Wompoff might be for this year. Um, people aren't very optimistic. People mm. are thinking it might be called off. People are thinking, hey, without the Hawaiians and without the Goldie and without all the teams being eligible to compete, it might not happen. Now, that makes me very sad because it's one of my highlights for the year. Now, it would have been Womp Off what? Last weekend. Yeah. So we've already passed the actual date when it would have maybe gone ahead. It's going to be weird because it's starting to heat up here. We've never had a Womp Off in spring or summer. So that means it might be nice in the water. We might be able to get now sluggos, but also <laughs> swell is different. Mm. But in saying that, swell's never been that big or that great out of Wompoff. So I guess that doesn't really come into play. Yeah, well, it, it, not since we've been a part of Wompoff yeah. anyway. Uh, different swells, exactly right. Here on the east coast of Australia, in summer we get a lot of nor'east swells. So it's kind of your cyclone swells up in the... Uh, tropics and they push down the east coast of Australia and we we tend to get more nor nor'east swells. Uh, so that's hitting obviously it's hitting different breaks, it's mm. um, hitting different beaches and different reef spots at different angles. So uh, yeah, it's going to be quite different if Ricky decides to go ahead with Womp Off within the spring summer period. Mm. Uh, we may have to be looking at different spots. Um, yeah, the weather is going to be hotter. How are we going to go spending a whole day out in the sun? You know, yeah. like um, all things that he has to worry about. But from the rumours I heard, it may not be going ahead at all. Yeah, which is very, very sad. But understandable, it has been a very unique year. Um, I'm glad that some stuff has gone ahead, even though, yeah, they have sort of tampered with it and changed the format and, and some people weren't able to compete because they couldn't get there and all that sort of stuff. I feel like, if anything, as you're saying, Australia's doing well. We could run something. It might look very different. Teams might be completely different. Who knows what the format might look like, but I think we need to have a chat to Ricky, maybe get him on the podcast soon just to see what's happening this year. I'm annoyed because, you know, we collect the shirts each year. Yeah. I want a 2020 well, I, shirt. I actually was wearing my shirt this morning. I decided <laughs> to take it off. Uh, maybe we can run a a run a body surf podcast. Shirt. No, not a shirt, a comp. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, a, just an individual's comp for anyone who can make it. We'll open it up to some of the New South Wales teams and... See what we can put together, Timmy. Possibly. Even if it's not an official thing, we just get together on a day. We'll have a couple of judges. and That's almost it. Why don't we just, if, if even just have a meet, just mm. have a big meet, get all the teams o- over to a break, have a swim, and then and then go have a bit of a, a drink somewhere. Mm. The problem is we'll have too many people turning up. Imagine trying to make a booking for you know 60 people. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just not, not going to happen. happen. You no. can't do a booking for 10 people. Mm-mm. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a bit disappointing. But who knows? We'll have a chat to Ricky. He might be cooking up something. Who knows? And uh, generally around the, this time of year, I th- does Ricky normally come out with a new product? Yeah, I, I think... What he's done this year is um, he's been more focusing on uh, the Amazon stuff. Yeah, so, that was huge. Yeah, so a big grant that he received, which is great. Uh, and maybe that'll go into future products. Uh, listen, he's really killing it with the bad fish at the moment. Well, that's it. And, and new colours are available. And uh, the red one came out. There's a white one floating around as well. The, mm. the, the white whale, they call that the Moby Dick. Um, so I think is that, that official? No, <laughs> that's what I call it. <laughs> it, it, it was only like five mate, so mm. uh, they look really special. But the uh, the red ones look great as well. So maybe that's it, like bringing out new colours and, and stuff like that. Who knows? He might do another bad fish uh, with like a different mould. Yeah, that's right. Um, maybe like, a smaller one. Yeah, or even like a, a moon tail bad fish. That's right. That yeah. could be cool. I have been using the bad fish lately because my strap broke oh yes on my on my fish and uh ricky's very 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 nicely sent out it's sending out another strap and for any of our listeners if you have the same problem hit him up on instagram and 
he's normally pretty good with that stuff. Oh, he gave Wolfo just a new hand plane. Mm. He just goes, here you go, mate. He gave yeah. him a new one. But you've got one of the ridgy did, so you probably don't want to lose that one because that's an original war. <laughs> no, well, that's right. And I have lost it before <laughs> on multiple occasions f- from strap issues. The old strap wasn't that good. It was Velcro. And so, uh, well, the new strap's Velcro as well, but it was kind of just like a wrap around piece. And so what would happen was the... Um, if the plane came off on the wave, it, the wrist strap would then pull against the strap and then rip the Velcro off. Mm. And so, uh, yeah, I was at Suck Rock one day and it, it came off and I went, well, I'm never seeing that again. It popped up about five metres so from lucky. me and I went, <laughs> no, I didn't pick it up. I just, I saw it and I went, I paddled for it and then the next one hit me on the head and it was all over. And I went, never, I'll never see that again. Well, went all the way in. Went to shore, asked a bunch of guys that hadn't seen it, and I walked down to Voodoo, which is probably 50, 60 metre walk, and it was just sitting in one of the rock pools there. Lucky. Really lucky. So, yeah, I've had that board for probably three or four years now. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. But the bad fish is holding up all right? Bad fish is going all right. It's um. And you've been on the guy butcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm giving the I'm giving the Benway a crack again. Oh, yeah. Uh, the pocket rocket. Yeah, the pocket rocket because it's been in the shop. <laughs> so I've still got to put some um, resin on it. I've been talking about that for a while. But I just, I'm a busy boy, Tim. Oh, I know. I mm. know. I know. Really busy boy. And so once I get that resined up, I'll be uh, trying to take on some different waves. Mm. Maybe even the uh, secret one I went to on Friday. Yes. So Very nice. What about you, Timmy? What have, what, have, what have you got planned for the next coming days? Well, I need to start exercising. It is warming up here. We're heading into summer. It's I don't have my bikini bod ready. So mm. I've put on a fair bit of weight just because it's winter, but also maybe because of COVID. Everyone sort of just hanging in, eating food. But um, I need to get ready for summer. Uh, and I don't know how to do it. I just I hate the gym. I hate swimming laps. The only exercise I like doing is walking to the pub mm. and also body surfing, you know, once or twice a week. So in summer, I generally lose a lot of weight just from being so active in the water. So all I need to do is go swimming every day and I'll be fine and maybe lay off the beers. Um, but I think I've really dug myself into a, an awful situation mm. and I think I need to maybe go on a bit of a diet Oh dear. Go easy on the beers and start proper exercising. Mm. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, the Nick Robot workout. I'm just talking about a bit of walking, a bit of running, a bit of weights, uh, a bit of swimming, absolutely. But uh, yeah, I'm not ready for summer at all. And I'm very nervous about getting the <laughs> sluggos out. Do you like heights, Tim? Yeah, love them. But I don't, I know everyone's been getting into the rock climbing. Yeah. Well, this is what I wanted to suggest because <laughs> I, I, I was anti it and I don't like heights. I went the other night with Sean mm. and Liam and I had fun. It's A lot of people are getting into it and uh, I think it's because they're like rock climbing establishments are able to safely space everyone out. So mm. it's a great way to exercise with a group um, because they don't really, it's not like a gym where everyone's packed in there. They're, they're able to space everyone out safely. So a lot of people that I know have taken up rock climbing du- like during the COVID mm. pandemic. So... Uh, yeah, I was surprised to see you getting into it because I know you, you aren't a fan of heights. Now, I, I like heights, but I'm more of a, a thrill seeker and I don't think rock climbing will give me that thrill. It's more of just, you know, an exercise. Yeah, but then again, there are some climbs that kind of go inverted on themselves. Yeah. And if you could get up to that level, maybe it would give you that mm. excitement that you need. Uh, for me, I... I can't see myself getting to that point. Uh, I st- still don't have a lot of trust in the harness system. Uh, but I, I just don't have the upper body strength. Yeah, but maybe that's what, see, that's kind of what you need to mm. do. I've still got my gym membership, but I haven't been going. I'm, I'm with you, Tim. I need to lay off the beers and, uh, and really pull my head in because yeah. I've been eating too much crap. Even last week, I mean, we spoke to Daryl uh, yeah. about heart health. And if anyone's got a terrible heart, it's you and me <laughs> because we eat terribly and and we drink quite a lot, mm. you know, we're not doing much exercise. No. So we're getting to that age, Tim, where it's like starting to become irreversible. <laughs> yeah. So if we stop now, we've got a good fighting chance, but mm. I can't see it. <laughs> can't see it happening. 
No. And when I was a kid, I was a very skinny kid, like almost skeleton-like. I had, had no meat on me whatsoever. And I knew back then, I'm like, I know this is not going to last forever. Mm. So back then I would just eat whatever I wanted, run around. I'd have a fast metabolism. It was great. Um, now... I don't have that. And I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to catch up to me. And I always thought, you know, when I start putting on a bit of weight, I'll, I'll, I'll try and take control of it. But it, it's I'm too far gone. <laughs> I, I love my food. I love a drink. And I hate exercise. Mm. But we're lucky that we love the water because body surfing, I tell you what, is a pretty good exercise, especially when we're out there for a couple of hours and you're yeah. treading water and you're catching waves and you're swimming hard to get out of there. It's, it's, it's actually a really good exercise. We just need good conditions because at the moment it's too cold and also the waves aren't that good. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see the, the data on how many calories you burn, how many kilometres you swim, uh, what your heart rate is. And there's little devices that you can put on your... Mm. Uh, I think they're called watches. Yeah. <laughs> they tell the time too. Uh, if someone's got one of those, please send through the data because I, I'm interested to see how how beneficial it is for, for your health. Well, I've seen some data. Um, <laughs> Bondi yeah. has one. Oh, does he? And uh, yesterday or the day before, we went for a body surf. It calculated that Bondi caught about two waves. Yeah. Now that... He, he actually caught more than that, but I think they joined them together because the rides were so short. Yeah. Um, when you're body surfing, I guess you're not on a wave as long as maybe a, a surfer or a bodyboarder or even a, a male longboard rider. They can stay on waves for a while. Mm. Body surfer, you're sort of on it and then you get dumped. Mm. So it calculated maybe the five, six, seven, eight waves that Bondi got and gave him a number of two waves. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how many calories he burnt. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how long he was swimming and being active and stuff but yeah i think the best thing to do is is not worry about all that technology go out there without a watch and try and stay out there for as long as you can and mm. and that's where you get that real workout and w when it's warm in the water you don't want to get out and that's yeah. why we lose so much weight we're skipping meals because we're in the water for so long yeah and that's what i want to get back into at the moment it's way too icy to do that we're in and out now if the surf was better we would maybe stay in a bit longer mm. but because we're not moving and getting a lot of waves we're just ready for a bacon and egg roll so i'm looking forward to summer even if it's not you know great surf conditions it's just going to be nice to get in the water so hopefully you'll be at a few meets this summer i'm looking forward to heading down south i would love to do a few stanny trips i'd love to do a few wollongong trips Hey, we might even do a trip up north. I'm keen to go to Terrigal with you one weekend. So, ah, oh man, I'm looking forward to it. And I just hope that this COVID-19 thing doesn't dictate uh, our body surfing too much. Mm. My sentiments exactly, Tim. Well, we should get out of here. Yeah. Um, we should mention first before we go a huge episode next week, a very, very special episode. Purveyor of Stoke, all the way from the United States, will be on the show. We talk a little bit of uh, politics. It's always nice when we have a guest from the US to talk about what's going on over there because it's a mess. It's mm. a real mess. And, uh, geez, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, Sports Bet, uh, one of the, the big betting apps over here, are going crazy with the political markets. Do you know that the presidential election is the second biggest market on sports bet? Oh, yeah, I know. That's I out of that all sports. Yeah. Like that's horse racing, mm. everything, which is crazy. People are really invested in this and we've got, it looks like a, a you know, a two-party preferred uh, betting system, which is old mate Donald Trump and uh, old mate Joe Biden. Mm. So it's going to be exciting to see what happens there. A lot of people would like to see Trump get out of power um, they've been trying to get him impeached for a very long time. That has not happened. Mm. This is their chance to uh, have a crack. So Joe Biden's probably going to be doing that. And we'll have a chat to Purveyor of Stoke next week about the US and the, the political climate over there right now. But also we're going to be chatting a lot of body surfing. It's going to be a good episode. So stay tuned for that next week. Anywho, yeah, we, we got to get out of here. Do it all again real soon. But for now. It's always overhead when you're Biden surfing. <laughs> Bye.